Are you feeling freaked out by trying to figure out everything that you need to do in order to start your own consulting business? Well, don't worry. You are not alone, my love, because today I am going to share with you my clear step-by-step -step roadmap to get you started. This video will help you create a game plan so that you can transition completely from that nine to five toxic relationship that you might be in to running your own successful consulting business. Are you ready? Good. Then let's get to work. All right, guys, so I am going to run you through the steps, right? And these are steps that I have learned over the years of starting multiple six and seven figure businesses. These are not steps that came to me naturally and that I ultimately knew in the very beginning, but they are ones that I definitely learned from real life experiences. And I wanna make sure that you understand I have a full fledged mini training that is available for you if you really want to dive deeper into these steps because I've only got so much time here on CPTV. You you make sure that you check out that mini training. I have taken my number one freebie, which was a simple cheat sheet and checklist and turned it into a full blown mini course. And I am giving it away, literally. So make sure that you check it out. Link will be in the description below and also in the comments. And you can also check it out at www.cherylcperez.com forward slash consulting startup roadmap. Now let's dive into what these steps are because I'm giving them to you like this in order, all right? I'm giving them to you in order because nothing like somebody telling you what to do but not telling you what order you should do it in and then you mess the whole thing up. It's like baking a cake, right? Sometimes you gotta put the dry ingredients in before the wet ingredients and I'm get breaking it down for you that specifically. So put on your hats and get your notebooks out and let's get going. Number one step, master the mindset, my love. That is the first thing. You have got to wrap your mind around what it is that you are about to embark upon. It does take work in order for you to transition from an employee W2 mentality into an employer, be your own boss, entrepreneur mentality. The biggest transition that you're going to have to make is that you already, as an employee, know that you've got skills. You know that you have talent. You know you have expertise that you can sell. No doubt about it. The biggest mindset piece that you've got to master is how to now also develop the skills that it takes to run a business. There are very, very, very different things, right? I have worked with so many entrepreneurs and nonprofit founders over the years, and it's very simply put like this. If you are an amazing pie maker and you sell award-winning pies, you are good at making pies. But the moment that you decide to open up your own bakery and start selling those award-winning pies, you are no longer just making pies you are running a full-fledged business. You got to get the cash register. You got to hire the staff. You got to get the equipment. You got to get the permits. You got to do all that CEO stuff. And deep down inside, you really just wanted to be able to make pies and make money off your pies for yourself. You cannot eliminate the run your own business part. And that is what you've got to wrap your mind around. Write that down, write that down. Find out what it's really going to take in order to be successful. What mind shift changes do you need to do? What skill sets do you need to develop? Believe in yourself is absolutely critical. There is no imposter syndrome allowed when you are an entrepreneur. It's going to creep in. It's gonna come, but you've gotta figure out ways to overcome it. And for the first time in your life, you may have to begin to master self-love and self-care and really controlling anxiety and stress because you may have had it before when you were working for somebody else, but when the stress is affecting your own money in your own gig, it becomes a priority. So you've gotta make sure that you've got that mindset piece taken priority for you. And then I also recommend that you create a transition and a time management plan. I mean, it's going to be a struggle and the number one thing that I see when people are stalling in this process is that they tell me these big long stories about life that's happening and why they don't have time. And I read the stories and I feel empathy for you in your stories, but I also know that I have too faced life be life in. I have too had to overcome all kinds of things and I've 
two, had to prioritize my dreams. And until you figure out how to do that and how to make sure that you're prioritizing your own dreams and your own business over somebody else's, you're going to have difficulty truly getting going. So you've got to master that and learn how to stay positive, learn how what you need to implement from a mindfulness perspective in order to be able to do that. And that was really when I began to institute some of the mindful practices like meditating every morning and doing my morning affirmations and doing my grateful journey and doing yoga and walking and having peace and time and taking solitude. All of those things were not things that I prioritized before having my own business. But let me tell you, honey, they are things that I prioritize now and so will you. Again, the consulting startup roadmap is going to be an absolute godsend for you. So you have got to check it out in the link in the description. And while you are down there, give me a like if you are feeling where I'm going with this and make sure that you subscribe and give me an amen if everything I just said was something that you can identify with because amens uplift me and help, fee- help me with my mindset. Now, step number two in this roadmap is really for you to finalize and validate your consulting business idea and the model that you want to practice. There are multiple consulting business models. You may not even know that yet. And if you don't, that's a part of this step, right? This step really includes identifying your niche and your sub niche because there are niches and then there are sub niches. You got to really figure out where your skills and your passions intersect with what the market needs, wants, and will pay for. And that's the direction that you're going to want to go in. You've also got to do your market research and your competitive analysis to make sure that you're choosing the right idea. You know, oftentimes I get people who ask me questions about this step and I want you to really understand what I'm telling you. The idea idea that you have is a good one. That's not what I'm saying. I don't care what the idea is. I'm telling you right now, it's a good one. The fact that it's even giving you a burning desire to move forward in entrepreneurship, it means it's a good one. This step is about continuing to master what it is and downsizing and perfecting it so you know exactly where you fit. I'm not telling you to change your idea. I'm telling you to finalize, validate, and optimize it. That's all we're doing in this step. So this step doesn't include changing. It includes really truly understanding the demand for your services, what it is that your competition is doing to find out if you should be going down even further and niching down even further. And then ultimately talking to potential clients, identifying who your client is down to specifics of who that person is, because this step is going to ensure that your business is solid and ready to go. And it's going to give you the confidence to move forward with marketing marketing and beginning to invest, right? So this piece is very important. So make sure that you take time to do step number two. And if you don't know how to validate and do the research, grab the roadmap, boo. I tell you, I tell you in the roadmap. Step number three is to set up your business foundation and to set it up correctly completely the structure. You have to do it. Um, Here are the essentials to a strong business structure and foundation. I get asked this question all the time, so grab your notebook because I'm about to tell you. Number one, picking a good business name, right? Securing your brand identity online, your domain name, your social media handles, registering your business and picking the right structure, getting your tax ID taken care of, setting up your business bank account, and then also ultimately connecting your financial software so that your business finances can be tracked and you've got money in and money out. You've got to set up the foundation in that order. You got to get your address during this time. You've got to get your business phone during this time. You've got to set up your professional image. You're trying to be a consultant, a high ticket consultant. Now, if you want to be a consultant that's only charging 50 bucks an hour, quite frankly, you still go need a professional presence. But the expectations of what you are doing takes you to the next level. You cannot get away with a gmail.com email. You cannot get away with mixing personal calls and business calls on your cell phone. Corporations, businesses who are giving you their hard earned money are not going to give you that money if they do not believe that your expertise is something and your professionalism is real. So this is a very important step for you as a consultant. Do not take it lightly. And if you don't know everything that goes into this step, then please, like I said, grab my roadmap, say roadmap in the comments below. I'll send you the link because you ultimately need to make sure that step number three is on point. It it was critical to your ability to make money and charge what you need to charge in order to have a successful consulting business. Step number four in this roadmap is to create your core processes, my love. Yes, 
Whew, consulting requires so much precise perfection and expertise and professionalism that processes are going to be critical. It is also going to be very difficult for you to ever scale beyond a certain number of clients if you don't have efficient processes in place. And you need to be able to very quickly exemplify professionalism, expertise, and goodness, right? And greatness. So creating your core processes in this step is going to be important for you. And when I'm talking about core processes, I'm talking about the big ones that you need to worry about in the beginning. There's going to be a ton that you're going to have to do over the years. Trust me, I have created probably hundreds in my business, especially as you add team members, especially as you switch things up, change things up, you're going to be adding stuff. But the core ones are really going to be your money in, billing and payments processes, your sales process, your client onboarding processes, your service processes, and then your offboarding, getting feedback, getting social proof and all that kind of stuff process. And I say process, I mean workflows. I mean, you can ultimately automate so many so much of that with the right tools and the right resources that you can really pretty much have a, a discovery call and send somebody through an automated workflow and sales process that is so seamless and so professional that the simple process itself will get the person to say yes will help convert the prospect into a client I cannot tell you how many clients that I've gotten over the years that said to me girl I knew I was going to hire you when I received the proposal because it looked good. And I thought to myself, I want to do this in my business. You see where I'm going with this? So even the process can create an impression. So it's got to be on point. And that's why you need to make sure that you've mapped them out and that you are optimizing them always. And step number five in this roadmap, really, um, if I could summarize, you know, like the last couple into one, it would be test it out and start serving clients as a side hustle. It's the truth. Um, if you have watched any of my previous videos, if you watched last week and if you have or have seen the roadmapper in there, I talk a lot about creating a transition plan and giving yourself a quit date from your nine to five so that you can transition and this transition plan that I've talked about, and actually if you grab the startup roadmap, you'll have an opportunity to also get my actual transition planner that comes along with like an audio training that goes with it. But th th this is really important because during this time, the, the bulk of the time at the end of this transition, you're gonna wanna be testing it out and you're gonna be doing this as a side hustle. There's no way to avoid it, right? Um, there's so many different concerns that you may have when you think about doing it as a side hustle. Don't worry about that right now, okay? I just want you to wrap your mind around the fact that you're going to have to do it as a side hustle. You're going to start small because that's where you've got to start. And the best place to start small is when you already have income coming in, especially in a job that you've been doing for so long that you can do it in your sleep. You know, you got extra time at your job that you don't be doing stuff. So, you know, maximize that, optimize that, and then make sure that that leftover you use for your business. But you want to start small, begin with a marketing strategy, offer your services to a few folks, test your ideas, see what they're comfortable with and paying, get feedback and social proof from them and continue to build your marketing around that. Because when you do quit and you go full fledged, you have got to be a marketing guru at that point, right? Get feedback, use your client feedback to refine and improve your services. Because when you first put your services out there, it's a great idea. You've done your research, so you know it's got a good chance. But the final tweaks that you make are going to be what makes all the difference. And it's also going to help you continue to refine that unique value proposition. So this is a great opportunity to do it. You don't want to necessarily be stuck doing this when you are not working for somebody else and don't necessarily have the income coming in. And then this is also a time frame that you're going to continue to tweak and adjust. Do not feel like because you have to change or you have to tweak or you have to adjust that that means you made the wrong decision to begin with. No, my love, that's not what entrepreneurship is about. Remember what we talked about in step number one, the mindset, wrapping your mind around the difference between being an employee of somebody else and actually being your own boss. A big shift is it's okay if you've got to tweak and change. You may have worked for somebody that made you feel like tweaking and changing was bad. When you're an entrepreneur, tweaking and changing is good. It is mandatory. It is not optional. So embrace it and move forward and get excited about it. And that is what this step is truly about. Make the changes that you need until your business is profitable and you can begin to see the, the forest for the trees. And starting it as a side hustle allows you to learn and grow before going full time. And the most 
most important thing it's going to do is build your confidence. I'm telling you, my side hustle was making so much money before I actually took the leap that I was at a point where I was like 100% sure that I was going to be successful at this thing. And that's kind of the space you want to be in when you begin to like, you know, take it, take the sleep and go out on your own. And I can tell you, it, it didn't take a whole lot of, of money for me to do that. I mean, after I think I signed my first like $10,000 contract, I was like, oh, hell yeah, I was right all along. You go girl. And I knew if I'm doing this for myself for 50 hours a week, like I do for, for, for this toxic nine to five relationship that I'm in right now, I'm going to be good to go. I mean, $10,000, I only need 10 of them to get to a hundred thousand. I only need 20 of them to get to $200,000. And can I manage 20 clients in a year? Absolutely. I've managed more than that for these people. I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to get off my soapbox. You know where I'm going with that. So step number five, test and tweak, start as a side hustle and you will be well on your way. So yes, my love, that's your roadmap. Those are your steps in order, all right? It's all about having the right mindset, validating your idea, setting up a strong foundation, creating your core processes, and testing it out as a side hustle. You have got this, trust me. You are on the right path. You are totally fulfilled in your purpose in order to be able to do this. And don't forget to check out that roadmap. I'm telling you, it's going to get you into the nitty gritty and actually teach you how to do all these steps and dive a whole lot deeper, give you the transition plan, all kinds of good stuff. And until next time, my loves, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. If you want the roadmap, comment roadmap. I will get it to you. No questions asked, no problem. Um, and until next time, my loves, I will see you soon. Bye-bye. You are an entrepreneur.